So we're going to continue our work on cumulative review number 8 by looking at problem 11. Find all of the zeros of the following function. So hopefully you're looking at this and saying I'm looking for a total of 5 zeros. And I notice that I can factor out an x from the very beginning. So x to the 4th plus 3x to the 3rd plus 5x squared plus 27x minus 36. In which case this x right here is causing a 0 at... Zero. So I'm going to leave that one there. And then I'm going to look at my graph and I'm going to see, notice I've graphed the original function, but I want to see where this equation is crossing, where this equation will be crossing the x-axis. So there's the zero that I just found, which is good. And then I'm going to start some synthetic division by one of the other zeros that I see. So I see a zero at negative four and I also see a zero at one. So if I go back to my original problem, Right? I've already taken out this x, so that's all well and good. So then in this remaining part, I'm going to divide out by that negative 4 that I saw with synthetic division. So listing my coefficients and my constant across the top. Bring down the 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add them down. This will be 4. This is 9. This is going to be 36. Negative 36. This is then going to be negative 9. Negative 4 times negative 9 is 36, and I get a remainder of 0, which I should because I know that x equals negative 4 was a 0. So now there's a couple ways I can go from here. I could look at this and recognize that I'm at x to the third minus x squared plus 9x minus 9, and this is going to group pretty nicely, and I could use that method. Or I could go back to that graph and say I also knew that 1 was a 0. So now I can continue on 1 in the synthetic box, synthetic box, bring down the 1, 1 times 1 is 1, this will be 0, 0, this will be 9, 1 times 9 is 9, I get a result of 0 for a remainder, so I just found that x equals 1 is a 0, and now I'm down to this, which would be x squared plus 9, and I'm trying to figure out what zeros that's going to give me, because I have the square root of an imaginary this will be x equals positive 3i and x equals negative 3i. Notice if you factored by grouping, you would have gotten the same thing. Take out an x squared, I'm left with x minus 1. Take out a 9, I'm left with x minus 1. So I get x minus 1 and x squared plus 9. Same thing, up to you. All right, so then it says based off of the zeros, write the function as a product of linear factors. So that means my polynomial... What was it called? f of x? Yep. f of x is equal to x times x plus 4 times x minus 1 times x plus 3i and x minus 3i. Notice that because the positive imaginary was a root, it's conjugate. The negative imaginary also must be a root. All right, negative 3x to the 2 thirds plus 2 is equal to negative 145. So I'm trying to isolate this variable with a rational exponent. So I'm going to subtract 2. I'm going to get negative 3. x to the 2 thirds is equal to negative 147. And I'm going to divide by negative 3. x to the 2 thirds equals 49. And then from there, to get rid of the 2 thirds, remember this means I'm squaring and taking a cubed root. Squaring, taking a cubed root. I want to do the inverse operations. So x to the 2 thirds, I want to cube and take a square root. So I'm going to do the same thing here, cube and take a square root. So x is going to be equal to, these are going to cancel. The square root of 49 is 7 or negative 7. So then I'm going to take 7 and negative 7 and raise them each to the third power respectively which will give us our answers of plus or minus 343. All right, solving for x. Here we have a difference of perfect cubes, which will require the acronym of SOAP. So the first thing with SOAP is you want to identify what is being cubed. And here I have 3x that's being cubed. And then what's being cubed here? What's being cubed here is going to be 4. So I'm going to start with the same sign. Then I'm going to set up the opposite sign and an always positive sign. What goes here is 3x squared, which will become 9x squared, 
what goes here is 4 squared, which will become 16. And what goes in the middle are these two things multiplied together, which will be 12x. Now, this right here, you're going to set equal to 0. So we get that x is equal to 4 thirds. That'll be our one real root. Because if you think about this graph, it's going to cross through the x-axis just once. And then this one we're going to solve using the quadratic formula because these will definitely come out as imaginary answers. So x equals opposite b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And x will be equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i root 3 over 3. So thinking about simplifying what's under the radical, taking out the imaginary, and then simplifying your coefficients. All right, this one, solve for x. What you want to notice is that you have a squared term, a linear term, and a constant term. So we're going to do some u substitution here. I'm going to say u is equal to x plus 1. Because then what I get is x squared, not x squared, a u. I picked a u. u squared plus u minus 2 equals 0. Now this becomes something with quadratic structure that I can go ahead and factor. This will be u plus 2 and u minus 1. So then I get u equals negative 2 and u is equal to 1. But u was not actually u. u was x plus 1. So x plus 1 equals negative 2 and x plus 1 equals 1. That means that x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 0. And you can go through and check your answers by plugging them back in to these two for the x plus 1s and you should get a true statement. Neither one is extraneous. All right, write a polynomial in standard form, standard form, with the given roots negative 1, 2, and 4i. So my polynomial, I'm going to call it p of x, will be equal to x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 4i, and I know that x minus 4i is guaranteed to be a root because they are conjugates and the fundamental theorem of algebra helping us prove those complex conjugates. So I'm going to FOIL the two real terms together. I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 2. And then this one's going to become x squared plus 16. I'm going to multiply those all together. I'm going to get x to the fourth plus 16x squared minus x to the third minus 16x minus 2x squared minus 32 x to the fourth minus x to the third plus 14x squared minus 16x minus 32. There's our polynomial in standard form. All right, polynomial inequalities. So not just solving a polynomial and finding the zeros, but an inequality means we're going to have our interval notation for answers because we can have a group of numbers that satisfy the given inequality. So to start, we're going to pretend that this is a polynomial set equal to 13. And I'm going to go ahead and solve it just like I normally would. x squared minus 4x, this will then be minus 5 is less than 0. And I am looking for things that factor. We're going to have minus 5, x plus 1. And so x minus 5 and x plus 1 means that I will have a 0 at negative 1 and 1. Negative 1, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm using open circles because I am strictly less than 0, not equal to. And then I'm going to pick, interval, pick numbers from the intervals and test them. So from this purple interval, I'm going to test negative 2. Well, if I plug in negative 2 here and negative 2 here, I end up with a negative times a negative, which results in a positive. If I pick a number between negative, five, negative 1 and 5, I'm going to pick 0. Plugging in 0 here, I get a negative times a positive, which will be a negative answer. Picking a number between 5 and infinity, I'm going to pick 6. If I plug 6 in here, I get a positive. 6 in here is a positive, so overall positive. And from this original inequality, I wanted things that were less than 0. Well, numbers that are less than 0 are all of my negative answers, so I'm looking for negative 1 
till 5. Any number between negative 1 and 5 will satisfy this given inequality. Another thing you can think of is that this would have been a parabola that opens up with zeros at negative 1 and 5. So you'll notice that these were all positive values above the x-axis, above the x-axis, and these would have been negative values that dip below the x-axis less than 0. All right, similar concept, except we have a greater than or equal to sign, which means we will be able to include our zeros. And looks like we're starting with an x to the fourth, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more work in solving this. So I'm going to start with a GCF of 2x to the second. I'm going to be left with x squared minus 2x minus 144 divided by 2 is 72. Greater than or equal to 0. 2x squared. This is now going to become x. Oh, I took out a 2. I was say, this shouldn't be here. So this will be x minus 9 and x plus 8. That makes my factoring a lot nicer. So I'm going to have a 0 at 0. And it's okay to have a filled in circle because of this equal to bar. At negative 8, I'm going to count by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8. And at 9, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So negative 8, 0, and 9. So I'm going to pick a number in this test interval. We'll go with negative 9. 2 times negative 9 squared is going to result in a positive. A number greater than 9, subtracting 9, is going to be a negative. Negative 9 plus 8 is going to be a negative. Positive, negative, negative makes a positive. Number between negative 8 and 0, I'm going to pick negative 2. This one will still be positive. Negative 2 minus 9 will be negative. Negative 2 plus 8 will be positive, so overall a negative interval. This one, 0 to 9, I'm going to pick 1. 2 times 1 squared is positive. This will be negative. This will be positive. Oh, so overall negative. And then a number between 9 and infinity. I'm going to pick 10. This will be positive. 10 minus 9 is a positive. 10 plus 8 is a positive. So this is overall positive. I wanted all of the numbers that were greater than or equal to 0, which would be my positive values. So negative infinity until negative 8, and it was okay to include negative 8. And then from 9 until infinity. Notice that what's happening is that 0 here right, this is creating the zero, has a double, is a double root or a multiplicity of two. So if I were to graph this x to the fourth graph, what's going to happen is I'm going to touch and bounce back and keep going. So above the x-axis or below the x-axis respectively. All right, we're going to try to get through this one pretty quickly. So degree is going to be four. Leading coefficient, negative one, possible number of turns is one less than the degree, so three. Possible number of real zeros are four. They could all be real. End behavior, as x goes to infinity, let's see, we've got down, down. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y is also going to negative infinity. All right, so this would be going out to infinity, this tail's going down. Out to negative infinity, this tail's also going down. The roots are the x-intercepts. Uh, I'm going to do some work down here. Take out a negative x squared which will leave me with x squared minus 25. So I get 0 and plus or minus 5. So 0, 0, 5, 0, negative 5, 0. This one, though, has a multiplicity of 2 because of this square. So when I go to plot these, I've got a double root at 0. I've got a root at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I know this was a negative even, and we're going to bounce at 0. So I know that this tail is supposed to go down, and this tail is supposed to go down. And then I need to bounce at 0. So we are looking at something like this for a sketch. And again, just a sketch, nothing more. Um, you don't need to work to find how tall or how small those turnaround points are. We just need the general picture of the negative x to the fourth graph.